Okay, today we look at another attempt to brainwash and indoctrinate our kids through children's literature. Uh, this one, and we've done several of these videos because unfortunately there are so many of these kinds of books on the bookshelf. If you go to Barnes & Noble or any other bookstore, this one is called The Gay BCs because, of course, the regular ABCs are not good enough. If you're a gay activist, you need your own ABCs. So you've got The Gay BCs. This is written by M.L. Webb. And uh, I'll just read, the, this is the description of the book. It says, a play date extravaganza transforms into a celebration of friendship, love, and identity. As four friends sashay out of all the closets, dress up in a wardrobe fit for kings and queens, and discover the wonder of imagination. That's what the book is. Now, we know it's an ABC book. So what's the, I think we should keep this in mind as we, as we go through it. What's the age range of a book like this? You know. I'd say probably three years old to seven, three to seven is about the age range for a book of this kind. Uh, and that's what all the content in this book is directed towards, our kids of that age. Now, usually when we do these, these videos, I will, I'll read the book ahead of time a little bit just to get an idea of what I'm getting myself into. Uh, in this case, I didn't really do that. So I'm going to be experiencing this with you, all of us together at once. And let's go, uh, let's go through. I don't know, you know, there are how many letters in the alphabet? Last I checked, there was 26, so I don't know if we can get through all 26 pages, but we'll try. All right, the gay BCs. A is for ally, a friend who is there to stand up for you with strength, love, and care. B is for bi. You can shout it out loud. I like boys and girls, and that makes me proud. Bisexual is, uh, this is, again, we're talking kids three to seven years old. And we're talking to them about being bisexual. Yeah, for, for all the all the four-year-old bisexuals out there, you know what? A, a four-year-old is not bisexual. He's not gay. Kids at that age don't don't have a, a sexuality. That's something that is that develops over time. And never mind the fact that makes why would you even that makes me proud. I like boys and girls, and I'm proud of that. Why should there be pride in your sexual orientation in the first place? I never quite understood that. C is for coming out. You're ready to share what you feel deep inside. It's okay to be scared. D is for drag. You can strut and dance in clothes that you love, dresses, heels, or pants. Now remember, drag is burlesque for gay men. That's what it is. I mean, that's, that's the history of, of drag. It's adult-oriented. It's highly sexual by its nature. And that's why when you look at a lot of these drag queens for the Drag Queen Story Hours and the names that they have, even the, even the stage names that they choose are clearly sexual in nature. And then you just move your bum up and down like that, and that's twerking. So when drag is being foist on kids, that's what's being foist. E is for equality. We're on the same team. We all have the right to love, hope, and dream. That's true. I can't, I can't disagree with that. We all do have the right to love, hope, and dream, whatever that means. I have the right to dream and hope. You do. I'll agree with you there. F is for family, related or found. They'll stick by your side through your ups and downs. G is for gay. It's a word that implies you're a girl who likes girls or a guy who likes guys. H is for hope. Dream up a life that you'll love. The sky is the limit. Shoot for the stars above. And now we're really getting into it here with I. I is for intersex. Some are born with the parts of both a boy and a girl. Bodies are works of art. Uh, okay, yeah, some are born intersex. And by some, we mean about seven people in the whole world. But for some reason, they get lumped into this conversation. Why are, let me, let me ask you, why are intersex people, so-called, why are they lumped in with, with, with gay, trans? What do they have to do with anything? Intersex, that's, a, that's a, a medical condition. That's a deformity. That's what that is. So why are we lumping people who suffer from a deformity in with, what do they have to do with anything? Intersex people are always brought in, especially when, when the topic is trans. And, uh, and the left, they're trying to justify their position on gender. And they say, well, what about intersex people? What about them? What do they have to do with anything? You know, it, just because they're intersex people, how does that validate or legitimize a biological man who claims to be a woman? How does the existence of a, of a birth defect that he doesn't have, 
validate what he's claiming. And then why are we telling kids about intersex? At, at what point in a four-year-old's life do you say to yourself, you know what, I got to sit little Johnny down and tell him about, uh, and give him the intersex talk. Why does, it, why does a four-year-old need to know about intersex? There are 12 intersex people in the, in the world. Why does a four-year-old need to know about them? And also, born, born with, the boy, with the parts of a, a boy and a girl, it's more accurate to say that an intersex person is born with, with parts that can look ambiguous to us or that are, un, it's, it, can be, it can be unclear from a physical examination what biological sex this individual is. It doesn't mean that they ha- don't have a biological sex, and it certainly doesn't mean that they are both biological sexes. Okay, because really being born with the parts of a boy and a girl, what, what that would actually mean, if we're talking literally here, is that you would have a person who has the functional reproductive capacity of both a male and a female. And that type of person has never existed in the human species ever. That type of person does not exist. There has never been a person who has the ability to impregnate and be pregnant. Because that's what it would really mean to have the parts of a boy and a girl. That's never existed ever. What has existed are birth defects. Okay, J is for joy. You can sing, dance, and play. Find moments of sunshine in each and every day. K is for Kiki. K is for Kiki. What? K-I-K-I, Kiki. When friends come together to catch up on news, gossip, and weather. Is that some sort of gay thing? What is that? I'm going to look it up. I'm going to Google this very quickly just because I need to know from my own. I don't know what's about to pop up on my computer right now when I Google Kiki, but I'm doing this on camera so that, you know, it's, it's known. Whatever, whatever ends up in my search engine here, it's only because this is for my own edification. Go to Wikipedia. Kiki, alternatively, kiking, is a term which grew out of black American gay social culture and is loosely defined as a gathering of friends for the purpose of gossiping and chit-chat, and later made more widely known in the song Let's Have a Kiki, by the Scissor Sisters. Wait, 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 what's a kiki? A kiki is a party for calming all your nerves. Dear God. Yeah, let's reference a song by the Scissor Sisters for the four-year-olds who are, uh, be, this, the, who are reading this book. L is for lesbian. It's love and affection between two special girls who share a connection. M is for mountain, the peaks that you'll move with courage and strength found deep inside you. Is mountain, is that a gay term too? I don't even know anymore. Are we talking about actual mountains or is there some sort of gay subculture thing going on that I don't know about? N is for non-binary. You don't identify as just being a girl or just being a guy. Um, Which of course means nothing whatsoever uh, because as I always say, young kids... A young boy doesn't know what a girl is, really. He doesn't even really know what a boy is. He has very little understanding of any of this. And so for a young boy to say, I don't identify as a boy, that is a statement that has no meaning coming out of his mouth. And actually, it has no meaning coming out of the mouth of anybody, even an adult. O is for orientation. It's a balance between who you are, who you love, and how you want to be seen. P is for pan. You connect with a vibe, no matter the gender. It's about what's inside. That sounds very scientific. Connecting with a vibe. What does that mean exactly? And yeah, that's another, that's another con- pansexual. So pansexual, from what I understand, is someone who is attracted to anything. All takers. Um, and that's a concept that we need to in- introduce to kids, of course. Q is for queer, an, an inclusive term. It's used to show pride, unite, and affirm. Yeah, queer is interesting because it was a slur, and then, but then we were told, no, actually, it's, it's because this is what they do with, with language. They, a word is okay, and then the left says, no, it's a slur now. And then a few years later, they say, oh, actually, no, you're allowed to say that now in this con. Certain people are allowed to use it in this context. And we're supposed to just follow, follow along obediently. R is for respect. It's the right decision to treat everyone fairly, make it your mission. You know what's not the right decision? To write a book like this for kids. You freak. Can we, can we clarify one thing? Um, what is this book responding to? Right? What is, the, what, is, what, it is, what is it the answer to? Because you can't say that, oh, we needed um, a gay alphabet book 
you know, in order to be inclusive because of all those straight heterosexual alphabet books out there. And we need all this gay stuff for kids because of all the of all the straight heterosexual children's stories. No, there, there was never any. There wasn't any straight heterosexual alphabet book for kids. There was just an alphabet book. And it was things like A is for apple. B is for bicycle. There, I'm not aware of any book that was pushing any children's book, whether alphabet or otherwise, that was pushing heterosexuality on kids. It was more like, um, before we started doing stuff like this, the idea was, we don't need to introduce those concepts to kids at all because they're kids and it's not relevant to them right now and it's not appropriate for them. S is for sachet, a confident, fierce stride to show yourself off with attitude and pride. T is for trans, it's a brave step to take to live as the gender you know is innate. Uh, well, it's not innate though, because innate, something is innate if it, be, if it belongs, something is innate to you if it belongs to your essential nature, you know, if it's fundamental to you. And if you're a biological male, then being a female is the opposite of innate. It doesn't belong to your nature whatsoever. U is for unique. There's no one like you. Embrace who you are and love what you do. V is for vogue. Time to strike a pose, dance to the music, and put on a show. W is for wonder with so much to know, always ask questions to think, learn, and grow. X is for X. X is for X. Uh, you can write it down when you don't prefer M or F as your pronoun. Um, y is for you. Brave, creative, and strong, you are special and loved and you'll always belong. Z is for zest. Be bold and live free. Magic awaits you, whoever you'll be. All right. I can't believe I actually got through this whole damn disgusting thing. I, I have normally been opposed to book burning, but I would make an exception um, for that appalling mass of insanity and filth. You know, we always hear people complaining about things being offensive. And most of the time, the offensive thing is not really offensive at all or shouldn't be. But this, that, that right there, that is offensive. That is actually offensive. I admit, I am, yeah, call me a snowflake. I am personally offended by that. I am offended by the sexual indoctrination of children. I am upset by predators like the author of that book, Grooming Children. That does offend me. It does. But that's what this is. This is grooming. Imagine if you were out with your child uh, on the playground and a grown ass man walked up to your kid and said, Hey, little boy, uh, want me to tell you what a pansexual is? Hey kid, come here. Are you bi? Are you bisexual? You want to hear about bisexuals? Let, let me tell you about it. Come to my van and I'll tell you about it. If a man started talking to your kid that way, you would react in a way that communicates your feelings about that. Right. And what I mean is you would punch him in his throat. <laughs> And for good reason. I see no difference between that situation on a playground and a book like, like this made for kids. Objectionable, creepy, insane, disgusting. In summary, I didn't like it. I award this negative 12 stars out of five.